From your personal experience, what would you say the practice of yoga offers? <laughs> <laughs> uh, good question. That's an excellent question. Uh, from Tanya? From Tanya, yes. Tanya's questions, I have to say, are very, very, very penetrating. and um, Well thought out. Well thought out and stimulating. Uh, and also fairly tricky. <laughs> Which is good. Tricky is good. We like tricky. <laughs> yes. It gives you something to chew on. Aye. So, um, what, 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 what does yoga is? offer? Okay, <laughs> Just... uh, from your personal experience, what would you say the practice of yoga offers? Okay. I, well, I, I, I'm very tempted to say I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, because, I mean, there's a serious point there, because they don't really have that much uh, contrast to, to contrast it with. Uh, Because you've been doing it for so yeah, long. Yeah, I've been I've been involved with it for for, for so long, and for, for, for just really like the majority the majority of my, my life, yoga has been just there. Uh, it's a central central part of my life for, for, for most of my adult life. And even as a child as well. Yeah, and and, and also I mean it was a, a lighter recognition uh, on on my part, but um, I do realise now that as a child I was I, I was playing with. Yoga states of mind and, and, and yoga meditations. Quite, Can you quite, remember what you quite, did? Quite spontaneously. Well, you know, you know, there's a, a book, the Vigyanbhaya of Tantra, which gives 118 methods of meditation. I probably read that in my in, in my twenties, but with a feeling of recognition, just turning the pages and going our way and remembering. Oh yeah. Doing these things, you know, um, as, as like a child, child, child kind of games with the brain. How old do you think you were when you first started doing that? It's my earliest memories, you know, so it's probably even before I could walk. Really? Um, yeah, really right the way back, way back, I can remember. And certainly around, around the age of seven, eight, nine, I was very intensely engaged in teasing the mind ah. uh, into, in, into f falling into the, into the void, <laughs> yeah. you know. But, but there are some funny little meditations in there, like, like, like squinting your eyes at the sun and just really getting into the, the dancing patterns of where the light is refracted by your eyelashes and yeah. that kind of... Um, uh, as, actually, as, I remember as, doing as, that as well. a kind well. of a delightful game. Yeah. That is actually given as one of the meditations in, in, in the particular tantra that, that I mentioned. Yeah. And it's in that kind of involvement with, with the beauty of that phenomenon that you, you expand. Yeah. You expand and you experience Shiva's reality, which is the, the way that it's couched in, 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 in the Tantra. So, so it's, always, it's always been there, you know, and I think it's, it's a part of being uh, very, very curious about everything, which I think is not peculiar to me. I think it's, it's, it, it, in my genetic makeup, it's something that's quite, uh, it's quite to the fore, but it is, it, it's actually a defining feature of humanity, I would say, that we have that curiosity about our unfolding experience, about the world around us and about, about the world within us. So, so, so in a sense, always, uh, I've always been engaged with, with, with the... Uh, so you've never really had a, a kind um, of before and after no, no, not, thing not, with yoga because no, you've always so, done it, so you've no, like, not, got no contrast. Not, not so much. I mean, the, 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 those kind of late teenage years where... Um, there's all kind of like all weird hormonal stuff going on, you know, and you, you tend to want to do the sex, drugs and rock and roll. <laughs> I, I would say that that period in my, in my life, um, uh, that, I don't know, perhaps the, the, the yoga kind of shifted into the background, even though the preoccupations were still, were still there, you know, and still actually driving the, the sort of Dionysiac. <laughs> uh, tend tendencies that were coming forward, um, and I found in that period, yeah, that things were pr pretty chaotic. You know, that, that it was a life, a life of, of, of chaos. Um, and then the yoga wanted to kind of intensify and was coming into did, the form. Did the yoga help you enjoy the chaos more? <laughs> well, it, it's, it, well, yeah, I mean, I think it was perhaps even a yoga of entering the chaos. It was a yoga of entering the chaos, so that I know about it. Yeah. You know, and so, I mean, I mean, it's great, I have to say. <laughs> you know, sex, drugs and rock and roll, what's not to like? You know, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
But I would say that, you know, the chaos got reached this sort of point where you're actually kind of compromised in terms of like flourishing and health and all that kind of stuff. And yoga sort of seemed to like re-emerge and come more into the foreground. And, and uh, as they say, one, get, one gets one's shit together. <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that yeah. kind of scenario. <laughs> and, um, uh, and finding, not that the chaos went away, because it, it doesn't. You know, life, life is chaos. Life is chaos. The universe is chaos. People tell you some stuff about the deep, deep seated orders and things. But in the true sense of the word, really, it's all chaos. Uh, but but what, what what happens? What sort of certainly what happened to me was that I was just more able to to handle it, to manage it, to be to be to manage to keep smiling in the midst midst of it, mm. and also I would say to relish to relish life as it is, you know, and, and, and to love it and to love, love life as it is. Um, so, so I would say, you know, if I were going to stick, if I were going to wax poetic, even given that I don't perhaps have the, the right data to answer this question, um, I would say that yoga gives you a kind of a, 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 a yoga as practice rather than yoga as being state, you know, or so on. Yoga as practice gives you a, res a kind of a resilient, flexible s strength and I mean, I don't just mean somatically. I mean psychically, so as well as somatically. That it, that enables you to fully encounter life and existence um, with with complete complete openness, and to love it, and to love it at the same time. So um, that kind of being open is the practice, and that kind of being open and receptive to what's happening. In, 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 a, in a perhaps vulnerable way is, uh, is not only is it the practice it, it's the benefit of practice at the same time in as much as every, everything is vivid and one, one is aware of the, the connectedness of, of all things so it's pretty far reaching I think I want to say so. How is heart yoga different from other types of yoga? I should explain that the, the thing that we do here, and the thing that you and I do, Anna, <laughs> is, is we, we call it heart yoga. Um, the, the name heart yoga was actually ch chosen sort of fairly randomly. I can remember uh, quite a few years ago now, because it's certainly it, in the early days of the, the, the internet. Um, I wanted just to, to get a website, and you, you suddenly I was in this position. You had to choose a name. Yeah, and, you, <laughs> yeah. and you're there, and you, you with your dial-up modem, and yeah. you found <laughs> out of thing, and you're thinking, oh my god, what, what, uh, what, what should we call? call yeah, this? we and went through lots of things, didn't we? Well, I actually, just with that one, I just kind of came out, came out with this, and uh, I do think it's appetite for our approach, and we've yeah. stuck with we've stuck with it since, and I, 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 and, I, and I do like it. I mean, at that time there was another heart yoga in in the UK. Oh yeah. But they hadn't kind of got the, uh, the all the web addresses, so we just we did it, and they eventually relented and uh, changed their name, you know, into uh, in, I don't know, just into something else. So so just to just to clarify there, I'm rambling a bit, aren't I? Just to clarify there, heart <laughs> yoga is heart yoga is, is is the name of what 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 we say we do. Um, I don't think it's a brand particularly, uh, you, but you do need to, to, to establish some kind of distinction around what it is that you're doing. Um, difference between what we're doing and what everybody else does? Um, oh, that's a big question. It is a big question, and of course one doesn't know exactly all the details of everything that's going down. Um, but having said that, I do, because of working for the Independent Yoga Network, I do... Um, I see a lot of people's statements about their yoga, both teachers and training schools and uh, so on. Come, they, they do come across my desk and also because of having some kind of strange relationship with the, uh, <laughs> the wallers in the fitness industry. Their stuff comes across my desk as well. So I've got a bit of an impression of what's going down out there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and of course now the new media, Facebook, Twitter, all this kind of stuff, which is all very interesting, gives you again a, a picture. So I do, I do have an idea, but I don't want to dog dogmatically say that nobody else is onto the things that we're onto. Um, okay, uh, the, f the first thing 
I think the first way in, in which I think we are sort of quite different is that we we do emphasise how important it is that people are making their own discovery, performing their own inquiry, making their own discovery, and that we're not actually kind of imposing a, a, a grand narrative or a metaphysical system on students. I don't want to be to be doing that. And I do think that on Planet Yoga and in 21st century spirituality in general, that what is going down is, is a kind of a an imposition style of operation. Mm -hmm. you know, and then what we do is we encourage people to, to, to uh, through a kind of op openness and through a kind of letting be, uh, you know, to discover what, what, what their life is, what is going on, who they are, all these kind of questions, but to discover for themselves on the terrain of their own field of awareness. So, that I think it's a, it's a bit, it, it's a, that, that I think, there's not many people doing that. There are some people doing that. I do know one or two people who, who, who take that approach. It's actually quite difficult when you get down to the nitty gritty to, to completely bracket out that temptation towards some kind of metaphysical intervention. In other words, that kind of telling people how it is. Yeah. It's almost like language has got this thing built into it that, that, that you start speaking and you start communicating with people and you start, you instantly start erecting ideals. You know, you instantly start saying, well, this is how you benefit from yoga, aim for that. And it's almost impossible not to. You said, and you said that first question that, that, that we had, did that, it was automatically asking you to, to speak about a benefit, mm. you know, uh, that you would then aim for. Which of course, for the minute we start aiming for a benefit or an ideal or or um, or, or or a goal that's been that's been um, construed out, out of a metaphysical system or or, or a, a a grand narrative understanding of how life and the universe works, immediately you you create a split in consciousness in which one one is being drawn out of one's immediate field of awareness into into a fantasized future. You know, which may not even be even possible, because people just do dream this stuff up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, out out of their out of their wish, out of their wishes, out of their deep infantile wishes, uh, which in turn arises out of, of just how insecure life is. Where, you know, where death sits on your shoulder. Yeah. Um, and and pain and suffering is waiting to drop out the sky on your head every minute. Uh -huh. So there are plenty of temptations to go off into this. Into this, this, into this, this project of attempting to make yourself conform to some ideal, which will somehow render you invulnerable. Um, and this is Swami Vivekananda's agenda, absolutely unequivocally. You know, so so yoga is full of that. We don't do that. I'm, I want, I'm willing to say. Uh, I think he's he, he's midwifing people in their own self discovery. You know, if, and even that's perhaps a little bit too strong. You know, I mean, I see that what, what happens between 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 me and the people who, who seek, seek me out for some kind of help with their practice is is really is is nothing more than a, a kind of an intimate meeting between between yogis, I suppose, or just between human beings. You know, who are wanting to wanting to allow their curiosity and to engage with life in a very full and vivid and intense way. So that, that, that's us, that's us, you know. So if I want to put this in a posh way, I'd say that we, we take a phenomenological approach. And you know, phenomen phenomenology is, is that kind of branch of philosophy that, that, that makes its concern immediate lived experience. That is, that is, it, it feels safer there than, than, than in, in speculation or, or reinterpretation of scientific methods and so on. So, so I'd say we take a phenomenological approach. I believe that the majority of yoga people are taking a metaphysical approach. That means they're starting with the story rather than with, with raw experience. And out of the story, they say, if this, they say, this story is true, therefore it is possible to, to realise, I don't know, that one is the transcendental self through, through a series of stepped step phases, but that game is a game of, of attempting to perform some kind of surgery on, on oneself, some kind of psychic surgery on oneself, in order to realise 
a desideratum that's actually been set out and laid out by, by a speculative met, met, uh, metaphysical system. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't, I mean, if the, that's the kind of posh way of saying all, all that, you know. Um, the, the, the beauty of our approach, I would say, is, 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 is that it's, it, it, it doesn't rely on anything speculative or very little. It doesn't rely on that. So you're, you're actually, in a sense, on kind of safe, safe ground. You know what you know because yeah. it's in your face. So it's, <laughs> th this is this is us. You know this is this is our, our method. Um, so some other di other differences. Um, it f it follows it follows I think from from this this commitment to encountering immediate felt lived experience. It's due to, it's due to that commitment that we we find ourselves. Having a great deal of respect for spont spontaneity, um, and if you were, were going to ask me to, to say, well, what do you find? What do you find uh, with, with, with the, the practice of yoga? I think you do. You do find that the, that the core of the human being is this kind of spontaneous, creative matrix, in in, in which um, art, ideas, uh, ways of being, philosophies. Uh, poetics, scientific insights, uh, all bubble out of a kind of a deep well of, of silence and, and emptiness, and uh, um, so the, the, the plenum void, you know, the, the void which is full. Uh, so we find that. So we, we have a great deal of respect for, for spontaneity, and that, in terms of practice, means it shouldn't say in terms of like just that simple hatha yoga practice. It means that we don't use we don't use drills. Mm. We don't have like series one, two, three, four, five, no. which 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 are completely and utterly delineated. These, to my mind, are a little better than the than military drills. For, for for us, spontaneity in that kind of practice is is absolutely paramount. In which one, and that, that that is a practice in which one finds, in which one through through a sensitivity to to, to one's current configuration of en energy, one one is moved to move. Yeah. Physically, you know, and, and so that practice is never, never, ever, ever the same twice. Now, obviously, we have our routines, and because we teach the, ge the general public, we need some stuff <laughs> that they can do. You know, we've got to start somewhere, we need some, we need some things. So, you know, one gets one's kind of roots and, and cliches, just as you do if you're an improvising musician. You know, um, even the greatest improvising musicians have their little kind of fallback. Yeah. So, Phrases, you know, and uh, um, you'll you'll notice this. You listen to even the very greatest of the the, the Indian musicians who play some wonderful improvised rag, ragas, you know. And uh, but yeah, if our stuff was music, that's what it would be. It would be the the improvised ragas of Indian music, or perhaps bebop, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know. Whereas whereas some of the kind of more rote learning styles of Hatha yoga are, are, are a bit like practicing scales. You know, so yeah. that's another thing. Um, another ramification is, of this, this, this way of looking at it is, is that, that we keep it simple. It is simple. It's essentially simple. Yoga, yoga is simple. It's elusive, mm. but it's simple. Mm. It's actually easy, but elusive. So we keep it simple. People can have a stab at it. We can, and, and and also because we're not we, we're not bringing in any metaphysical baggage, or, or as little as we can, <laughs> you know, uh, pro pro probably not totally avoidable. But we we're, we're fairly scrupulous about not not overdoing the metaphys metaphysical baggage. It means we can teach just about anybody, regardless of what he, what they think. I mean, the people who come here, like Muslims, Brahmins, Buddhists. 57 varieties of Christians, people from all around the world. If people come here from, 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 in, from India, from uh, the Caribbean, from Poland, from Russia, from France, from the US. From Dudley. From Dudley. You know, <laughs> really remote uh, parts, <laughs> Dudley, Gornal and so on. Um, uh, and, 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 and with all manner of kind of new age beliefs and all manner of kind of experiences of yoga and vipassana and blah 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 blah, you know, and, and we're able to kind of work with everybody because we've thrown the baggage out and it's just the simplicity 
of sitting still or moving the body in some kind of aware way or just or lying down. It's the simplicity of that. Yeah, with and, no uh, stories. And, and, uh, and very little in the way of stories, but a lot of encouragement to connect with what's going on. Because what's going on is fucking amazing. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of a, and, uh, and uh, you, you want people to, to have it. You just do. You just want it. You can't help it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's that, you know. Um, I think that's probably the main, the main points of, of the difference. There's probably one or two others, but they escape me at the moment. <laughs> what would you say are the differences between a yoga teacher and an educator? And how does this relate to self-empowerment and self-acknowledgement? Mm -hmm. Good, very, very, very good question. Um, I've certainly been in the business of going around banging a drum and saying <laughs> yoga is not education uh, yeah. for, for a political reason, really. That uh, that in the UK, yoga is, um, is I don't know what's the word here. It's it's, it's fallen under the educational paradigm. Uh, and, 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 and therefore, uh, people engaged in yoga education have, have always sought some kind of governmental seal of approval, mm. some kind of... Uh, um, and the same kind of seal of approval that, that, that you might want for a university course or a, or, or a school curriculum or something like that. And it, it, it strikes me that that politically is a disaster for yoga, which, which needs to be hanging on to its countercultural credentials uh, if it's going to do its work in the world. And, if it, and, and also, I mean, yoga, yoga is freedom. Yoga is freedom. Yeah. It's radical freedom. And, and, and therefore, it doesn't need to be cozying up to, to, to a, a government that's kind of absolutely deranged in, it, in its desire to um, govern and control quite small aspects of life you know. so so for political reasons I've actually kind of been been, been saying that and probably origin, in, initially as a kind of a polemic it's just to say well it's not education so leave us alone you know it's not education of course there are many people in the yoga community who, 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 who um, have got much to gain <laughs> If they can, since they're working with this educational paradigm, they have much to gain by by, by persuading the world that yoga is education. But I, I think not. You know, actually, the more I examine it, the less rhetorical I need to be about it, and the more the more definite I am that, that it's not it's not education. Now, now, um, there's a couple of ways of looking at this. The, the first way is is to is to de define this term edu education in terms of what's actually going on around us now. Education as it is now, not, not as it was con conceived by the Greeks or, <laughs> or anything like this, but education as it's actually going on, it's going on now. Now what education is doing, doing now is it, it, it basically it prepares citizens, young citizens for, for, for places in, in the job market and in the economy. Um, and in so preparing them, it, it, it kind of it brings about a certain conformity in, in, in their character. You know, the, the, the economy and the job market needs a certain type of people. Education's job is to mould wild, young, human, curious human animals, <laughs> to corral them and train them in, into a form, into a form of character and habit that, that's, that, that, that enables them to become units of labour power. So yoga clearly isn't that. Yoga, if anything, is taking us in, in the opposite direction from that. Y y yoga is saying, well, social, social existence is all very well. We do need it. Um, let's do it properly. But a human being is, is, is freer than that, more magnificent than that. Um, Definitely. Yeah, vaster than that, you know, and, and, and so in a sense, and, and what yoga what yoga does to people, as I think I've, I've tried to indicate earlier on, is that they, they expand. Yeah. Not only do, you, do, do the individual's horizons expand and, and, and 
understanding expand and sense of life expand and intensity and vividness of life expand. That they say the whole kind of sense of self expands, you know. Whereas the education process, as I just characterised it as being an economic and, and social institution, um, is designed to, 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 to take wild, wild, wild human children, small divine beings, and to contract them. Mm. So, so yoga is not education, and people pushing the education paradigm are not doing doing yoga a service. And uh, and I do feel vindicated in the political stance that I've taken. In, in the UK against this educational paradigm. So, no, uh, yoga is not education. There is, there is that difference, you know, and it's a yeah. profound difference. Yoga yeah. is freedom. Yeah. Education as we know it, as we know it, is um, the opposite of that. It's a constraint. Mm. No. And yeah. yoga, uh, education is about a kind of giving of information, isn't it? Yeah, it's informational. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ed education very often is in informational. And certainly uh, in, in sort of our yoga teaching, you know, as I've mentioned, I keep it simple. So that I don't have to, 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 to transmit loads of information. And therefore people it gets in discover the way. for themselves. And therefore we, we're leaving the field open for the discovery. Now I would say that the yoga transmission... Now, I'm going to sound crazy now, but the yoga transmission is simply a spark that passes in the meeting of two, two yogis, one of whom is more experienced than another. Certainly, that's certainly my, my ex experience of, of having had a great, a great yoga teacher, was that the, the thing that mattered was just the spark mm. that happened that I can hardly speak about. The, the, whatever information was, part of, was was transmitted, sent across, I've long since forgotten. <laughs> and I, you know, the spark I'll never forget. Yeah. You know, that kind of short, that light, lightning bolt, you know. And it's, it comes through an open meeting between two people who are committed to this inquiry. And that's what I'm about, you know. That's, um, having said that, I think people who come here, they do get an education, a proper education, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, and and I've, I've said all those rude things about education as we've got it. But, but, but I do, actually, I am an educationalist and I, and I believe in education. Children in the third world, what do they, you'd speak to them, what do they want? What is their most pressing desire? It's to go to school and to learn to read and write. Because once you can read and write, you are empowered. Yeah. You are empowered. Because then you can go and find out for yourself. Yeah, then, it was you? the worst thing that, that society ever did for, to me, was to teach me to read and write, because <laughs> I, it then became pretty plain that there are millions and millions of opinions about everything. Yeah. And that what I was being told was up for grabs and up for question. And I, th I think that was an opening for, for yoga to happen as well. You know, so I'm not against, let me say I'm not against, I'm not one of these against educators. I'm just saying that what, what, what the system that we have here, in, in deeply embedded in, in this consumer capitalism, is, is, is a sorry version of it. Real education in which people research and create and, and acquire the tools to, of, of self-empowerment and liberation is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Now, we do, when people come and work with us, we do educate them. You know, they, they get everything from here. They learn about Wittgenstein, the psychoanalysis and science and Sanskrit and blah, 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 endlessly. But the actual, the core yoga part of what happens is none of that, it's not that. You know, it's not that. It, um, it's this, this spark that I spark about, but g given that I, that, that, you know, that I have, that, that I have a, a belief in real education, I'm quite happy to, to, to do what I can to help people to educate themselves as well, you know. And it's almost like the core of that process, the core of that informational gathering process and that, in, that gaining of skills, of, uh, of, of intellectual and emotional skills. Is underpinned and supported by the deeper, the deeper thing of, of, of the yoga, but the, the the yoga itself, the core of the yoga, is nothing like education as we have it. You could argue that it was like education as originally conceived. You know, the the, the Latin word I think educare means to lead forth. You know, and you might say that there is a kind of a leading forth happens when one when one teaches, one leads forth the student. But I think that's even that's going too far. In the meeting, 
between t two yogis, one of whom is perhaps a lot more experienced the, than the other. Uh, that kind of meet, that pregnant meeting in which, which the possibility of the spark is, is, is brought into play. Um, that isn't particularly a case of like a guru leading forth a disciple. It's, that is to put too much doing on the part of, of the teacher. And that, in a sense, becomes a kind of an interference and a, a kind of static noise in the process. You don't need that power, that power differential. In fact, I, I would say they're in the vulnerability of both parties. There is no power differential. Mm. And so even that kind of true sense of education, educare leading forth, is, it's, it, it's still too much... It's still too much to explain the yoga transmission. It's still a little bit too much of a doing, too much of a power differential, too much of an interference in, in a beautiful natural unfolding. So how about the, uh, the second part of that question? Mm -hmm. How does this relate to self-empowerment and self-acknowledgement? Okay. Uh... What was the, the first question? Yeah, it was yoga and education, wasn't it? It was, it was the, 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 the contrast or the similarity yeah. Yeah. between yoga and education. Okay, uh, I, th I think I mentioned the, the good, good education rather than the kind of institutionalised nonsense that we've, we've mostly got now is, 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 is very desirable um, to the extent that it is empowering for individuals, giving them... Um, intellectual and creative tools, and perhaps emotional tools for, 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 for living a good, intense and vivid and beautiful life, which, which who wouldn't want that? You know? yeah. um, so, yeah, I, I, I see a, a great role for, 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 um, for education in the self-empowerment of individuals as an ideal. That would be my ideal for education. As opposed to, uh, uh, well, as opposed to, wrong word there. Um, in the case of yoga, in the case of yoga, it does uh, actually empower, empower individuals. Y yoga practice em empowers individuals. Even, even yoga practice that's sort of quite qu quotidian in, in its approach, quite kind of... Um, Quotidian? Quotidian, you know, just down, down to earth in its approach, not particularly bothered about any, any kind of cosmic, cosmic shenanigans. Yeah. Um, I but I would, I would say that if you, if you, if you took up a yoga practice for the purposes of, of becoming empowered, for the purposes of becoming powerful, uh, that, that you, you would kind of miss the point. And, and I'm sure plenty of people come to yoga for that reason, and 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 he, and, and he does deliver, particularly a hatha yoga practice. You, you can develop very, a very focused and powerful will. Uh, and, the, and, tra and traditionally, and in terms of the the Indian scenario, a lot of the pundits of, of, of Indian yoga have, have, have precisely recommended that, you know, the, uh, certainly I mentioned before Swami Vivekananda, his agenda was, uh, or at least he understood the yogi's agenda as being one of becoming so powerful that you ruled the cosmos. Yeah. You know. So there is that agenda in there, but I, but I would say the kind of openness that enables one to inquire and discover what's going on is precluded by over much ambition to gain to gain some kind of power or self empowerment. I mean, having said that, if one does if one does make the inquiry that I mentioned um, with, with with some success success again is, is an awkward word here, but if you know if it works for you and you go you have the blinding <laughs> moment of insight yeah. uh, that that you will you will in the process become self empowered. You will have quite a lot of quite a lot of focus as an individual in terms of your individuation, quite a lot of ability to make stuff happen. You know, and as I said, the, the void, the plenum void, the, 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 the deepest part of yourself is an intense wellspring of creativity as well, which of course is, uh, you know, it's a manifestation of being empowered, that one is, one is creative in all kinds of ways. But I, what I wanted to say is it's kind of, it's, it's spin-off. You have to regard it as spin-off. 
you go to the yoga for that, it will obscure, it will obscure the, 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 the inquiry and the clarity that's required for the inquiry. So it's a funny, it's a funny kind of scenario. You do, you do get empowered, but if you seek the empowerment, you don't get empowered. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it becomes it, yeah, too, too much ambition in, in the practice of yoga is just very obscuring of of the goods. Mm. I would say. So that's what I would want, want to say about that. Was was that other How term? about the self self acknowledgement? Yeah, self acknowledgement. Well, I, I think self self acknowledgement. If if what Tanya means by that is is having a very clear view of one's individuated per personality, having a very clear view of it through some kind of um, meditative insight, perhaps you know, is 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 almost like 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 a, a condition for the yoga inquiry to happen at all. You know, re really, self acknowledgement is precisely the openness. To one's unfolding experience, um, both in terms of the macrocosm, the world out there, and the microcosm, this vast universe behind our eyelids. Um, the, yeah, that that is a kind of self-acknowledgement. You know, certainly the beyond your eyelids stuff, that openness and, and clarity, and attempt to some kind of clarity and truthfulness with what's going on behind one's eyelids becomes a kind of self-acknowledgement. In other words, you're saying, well, this is what I find, and I say yes to it, regardless of what it is. Yeah. Yeah, and and, and self-acknowledgement is, is, is quite different from the game of working on oneself to improve oneself. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Or to empower oneself, even. Self-acknowledgement is just taking a clear look, at the clearest look that you can manage. With, with, an, with, with an open sensitivity and vulnerability to what it is and, 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 and denying nothing about what you find. And at some point, actually going, well, yes, yes, you know. Self-acknowledgement is not apologising for, for, uh, for, for the detail of one's individuation. That's the starting point. How and in what ways have the Yamas and Niyamas been misconstrued for ethical commands? That's, that's, uh, I have to say that's a, vast, that's a vast, vast question. I should mention what Yamas and Niyamas are. They're, oh yeah, um, good idea. They're, uh, uh, they're, they're um, uh, notions that do look like ethical commands that, that, uh, that are put forward by Patanjali as the first two limbs of the eight limbs of Ashtanga Yoga, which is outlined in the second and third chapters of, of, the, of the Yoga Sutra, I think, off the top of my head. <laughs> you know, and there are five Yamas and five Niyamas. Um, and I don't know, I just, just so you got it from the horse's mouth, I could just mention what, what, what they are. Um, I shall wear my spectacles for you. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, there are five yamas, uh, non-violence, truth, non-theft, walking in Brahman, which is construed as control over sexual passion, avoidance of pleasures, not indulging the senses. Uh, and then the, the other, those are the first five yamas. Yama, yama is a word that means kind of like discipline, really, you know, if you're going to get down to the root of it. The knee armors, which are kind of knee, means like down, so they're kind of lesser disciplines. But it, in, lesser doesn't mean less important. They, they they are thought to be more personal. The first five of the armors are like universal. They've got a universality to, to them, and the and the the, uh, the second five are kind of to do with the individual more. Uh, so the, there are five knee armors: mental purity, physical cleanliness, contentment, ascetic practice. Study of inspiring texts, silent repetition of mantras such as Om, and surrender to God. Mm -hmm. So you can see they, you know, they 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 bear they bear a resemblance to the Ten Commandments. You know, they shall not steal, they shall not commit adultery, they shall not kill. They're all in. They're all in there. You know, and, uh, and uh, you, you can see why people want to construe these pretty well morally. As, as, as a bit like uh, Patanjali's Ten Commandments, rather like Moses' 
tablets of stone that he brought down the mountain. Superficially, they do, they do just look exactly exactly like that. Um, and why why people like this? I mean, I think Tanya asked me this. Well, why does why is this notion abroad really? And I, I would say it's this: people people who buy into the notion that these are actually the Ten Commandments of Yoga uh, 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 tend to be the, the the people that want to treat to treat yoga as a, as a, as a, a moral project. Of, of perfecting oneself through some kind of effort, some kind of self-surgery, self-shaping, um, to, to, to conform to an ideal which is vouchsafed and guaranteed by, by a metaphysical system. Yeah. So that, that, that's their agenda. Now, now as I've explained at great length <laughs> in many places, that our approach isn't that. Our approach is phenomenological ex exploration, existential exploration of, of what one actually finds in one's felt lived ex experience as it unfolds in in an individual's life, um, and for that reason, I'm kind of, I, 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 I'm, and because I think the, I think Patanjali is recommending exactly the approach that we recommend, from what I can see. So your interpretation is that he's that he's, he's not pushing he's not pushing the moral perfection um, ascetic. Game. He's pushing inquiry. Potentially, he's pushing inquiry and giving you some, giving you a few kind of pointers and and, and tweaks to, 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 to assist in that. You know, he's attempting he's attempting actually like to throw a spark across a couple of millennia yeah. <laughs> into your, into into your brain and your heart to, to for you to be able to have some impetus in that inquiry. So that's that. That I think is why it, catch, it catches on as, a, as an ethical. Why the Yama and the Yama are construed ethically? I think it's, it's that temptation to met metaphysical asceticism, metaphysically guaranteed asceticism, is just it's it, it's dominated human, human history. <laughs> you know, so it's a big it's a big thing that we're kind of pushing against, and we say, well, no, actually, there's a different way of looking at it. Many believe that doing yoga makes us good or directs us towards our light. How does our bad or dark side play a role in being human? And are we meant to be either good or bad? And to what extent? Okay, yes, yeah. and, 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 and another great question. And, and I suppose in the light of what I was just saying about yoga not being an ethical project, and Yama and Niyama not being uh, Patanjali's Ten Commandments, but uh, I should have mentioned what I think they are. There, there, you know, I think, I think it is are. a long answer, as they, you yeah, said. It's, it's, a, it's a long answer, but let's just take one, one, satya, truthfulness, generally. You, if you were going to construe that morally, you would say it meant don't tell lies. Um, I, I'm saying that, it's, that it's, it's a kind of a practice, you know, uh, or an orientation. Um, satya really is the openness which, which I talk about, you know. It, it is like a willingness to receive what, what is going on. And to encounter what is going on, and that it's a truthfulness in that sense, yeah. Um, rather than, than than you know, what one one is a moral person if one doesn't tell lawyers. It's not that. It's you know, we, we are as yoga practitioners, we are curious about our own existence and the unfolding of our own lives, and and the 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 the, the, uh, the yama of satya um, is is really. That approach of openness and sensitivity, and, and perhaps a kind of an unflinching encounter with what, 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 who and what we are. You know? And I think if you do encounter who and what you are, especially to, to the depth that you find as a human being, you 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 are full of every potential for the good every, and the bad, for every kind of behaviour, for cruelty, for uh, for violence. For manipulation, for raw, raw hunger for power, etc., etc., etc. And that, that can be quite a shocking realization. It's quite a shock, to have. It's quite shocking. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're dead, you're dead right. Yeah, a, 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 a shocking revelation. Yeah. And, uh, and also at the same time, we have this this tremendous uh, potentiality for altruism, for care for others, for massive imaginative flourishing. 
we're, we're pretty astonishing creatures, but we do, at our depth, contain, contain all potential. And I think if, if, you, if you're wanting to encounter yourself in totality, you, you, you greet the dark and the light. Yeah. You know, and uh, we're, we're, the, 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 this old notion, which you find in the Samkhya and in, in Tantra, but also in the, the, the Western um, Gnostic and alchemical traditions, is, is the, 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 the ultimate, if you want to put it like that, it is a fusion of the opposites of the light and the dark. And it's certainly, I think, what you, what you find, if you inquire, inquire honestly into yourself, you will find that, the light and, and the dark. And the whole of you, in your wholeness, you, you, uh, the light and the dark are in an embrace. Uh, a, sexual, a sexual embrace, even, I would go as far as to say. Now, I've got to make it clear that, personally, I prefer people who don't murder and torture other people. I prefer them. Me too. You know, and, and uh, at the same time, I think if you if you if you attempt to cast off your shadow, in other words, that all of your dark, what, what I might say, dark uh, possibilities, that that you you will only succeed in repressing them, yeah. and in repressing them, they will gain force. You know, and uh, and in the denial, they will gain. They will gain power within you, and eventually will express express themselves. You know? uh, so, I suppose my, my advice is that, that you encounter that fullness of possibility that you are, which is an, an, an entire spectrum from the most revolting to the most the most inspiring, and that is that is what you you are. Yeah? So. Hopefully, I'm not inciting people to, to become um, neo-Nazis or anything <laughs> like that. I'm just saying that the, you know, the, the, actual, the psychological actuality is that, 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 that in, in that discovery there is, a, there is a kind of a flourishing and a wholeness that, that emerges. Not that I'm wanting to dangle any kind of a goodie in front of you. <laughs> I'm saying just get over there and just get in there and find out. Yeah. What are the the two most common questions that your students ask you? <laughs> Very often when I say any questions, I just get greeted with... There's just a silence. Silence, yeah. <laughs> yes. I've, I've almost stopped, stopped asking in these kind of general classes. Uh, I used to be in, in the habit of, at the end, saying, any questions? Yeah, I used to do that too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but obviously the, the kind of people who are, who are more engaged uh, with the yoga, they do, they do ask stuff. The, the, I think the commonest one is, is the how question. Oh yeah. The how question, because uh, as you can imagine, I'm quite uh, jumpy, cagey around the, the, how, the how question, yeah. g given that it's very easy for yoga students to get obsessed with the methods that they're employing and, and in that obsession with method to, to, to get out of focus with the, in, the, the direct inquiry. Uh, but nevertheless, it's, it's quite frustrating, I understand, to be, to, to be, to be greeted with the, the, the reply, no how, there is no how. Yeah. There is no how. You know. So, that question, and negotiating that question is uh, always very interesting. Um, it's very, very difficult for, for it not to, to intrude, for the how, the notion of the how not, not to intrude. Uh, ju just as the ideal, the notion of an ideal or, or of a place that we're going or of a destination or a desideratum towards which we're gravitating, hopefully. Just as that notion seems to be built into language and, in, and, and into questioning per se, and into into the notion of practice of some sort per se. Uh, um, the how, the how always raises its head whenever you speak. The how raises its head. You know, I noticed myself doing it when we were talking about about, about Satya. You know, saying, "Well, it's a kind of an orientation." So it's almost auto automatically looks like something that you can do. You know. Um, uh, even though I would say, certainly in our approach, most of the hows are in fact like non-doing, they're non-doing, they're just things that you stop doing. 
it's, yeah. it's it's a decrease rather than an increase yeah if anything yeah you know um which again, just to return to a previous question, it, it, it highlights the difference between yoga and education. Education is an, accru an accrual, a steady accrual, uh, again in an increase, a daily increase, whereas yoga is a daily decrease, if you wanted to know the difference there. So yeah, number one, the, the how question and the whole load of conundrums that, that come around that and uh, a certain skill that one needs in that situation as a teacher to, to turn the how question into a... In, into 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 an inquiry and a looking and, and a, a looking a looking clearly and a finding out. So I need to think about turning turning that round, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now keep going. Oliver's just wandering around. Uh, don't Oops. worry. Here he is. <laughs> Here he is. Here he is. What do you he say? He was just Oliver? trying to climb up one of our paintings. What did you say? Hmm? Yeah, I'm not going to do it again. I'd say I'm oh, not going to climb up the painting you smell again. Smell very nice, you Anyway, nice smelling cat. So, so, uh, <laughs> so, what's the second most common? question? The second question? most common question, I suppose, is is you, you get the um, the question that takes the form of something's happening to me. Oh yeah. Uh, what the, the hell's this? Oh no, no. I, I, no. Had, I had this. I had this happen, and it, yeah, yeah. And, and it's it, it's kind of pretty freaky. What's going on? Can you tell me what it means? Can yeah. you tell me a what it is? B what it means? Etc. Yeah, yeah. So you get the question of people. Um, just catching a glimpse of what it is, what it is, is to be open, and then finding that they can kind of walk around <laughs> in 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 their, their daily life, doing their, their various bits and pieces, and engaging with their relatives and their friends and their lovers, and their children and their animals in this kind of open way, and engaging with their own in interiority and unfolding and uh, swirling, inner swirling. Um, with an, with an openness and then and then, and then starting to encounter some kind of fairly f what we call freaky phenomena you know and that, that is par par for the course the, 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 uh, interesting things yeah, will happen interesting interesting things will happen because inside you are a universe mm. full of full of good and evil full of light and dark full of male or female uh, full of of, of, of a plea of, of a plain and void you know of a, of a wellspring, an empty wellspring of tremendous f fullness and, and creativity and love, I should say, you know, that this, this thing has this kind of lo love quality and um, life becomes a trip. So, yeah. so, so f f f fun, funny stuff happens, you know, and, and, and one is often requested to, to situate that for people, to situate it, to, to interpret it for people. And I I suppose my, my, my answer again is, is one which needs to, to have a, a, a particular function, you know, and the, the function there being is to return, return the, the inquirer to, to their inquiry, to, to say, well, just carry on, carry on, go on. Don't settle anywhere. Drop that now. You've, you've encountered that, but, you know, you could... It's very easy to have an experience, one of the, one of the kind of intense, trippy experiences that go along with, with, with being open to life's unfolding, that, um, that you, you'll interpret it and bring everything to a stop in so interpreting it, using it to give, you, give your ego some significance or some one of these kind of scenarios. So the answer to that question, the, not that Tanya asked about the answer to the question, <laughs> but the answer to that question is one is really is, is, okay, that's very interesting, encounter it, digest it, live it, don't move. be afraid of it. Don't be afraid Being of the it. the big thing. And move on. Yeah. Move on. Because it's, 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 const it's movement, it's constant movement, you know. And the, 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 there are great temptations with these, these big, big phenomena, these big, stirring, very, very impressive, life-shaking phenomena to, to, to settle then. Oh, I've had this big thing happen, I'll stop now. And so... Those but, two. but there's always more. There's always more, yeah. The <laughs> message being that, that, that there's always more. Um, so those those two questions: how, the how question and the what the fuck does this mean question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how do you suggest that the perspective or mental state of humans can shift from the ordinary to the extraordinary? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs>
<laughs> this is the how question again, isn't it? Just just a few minutes ago, I, I, I was there kind of dissing the uh, the how question, and here it is the the how question, and yeah, the, the the how question doesn't go away, even though one studiously um, and hopefully skillfully uh, uh, avoids it or deflects it or turns it back to the to the questioner, so that more inquiry will occur. Um, well, and I, I suppose the, the, the how is now going to, going to reassert itself as it, does, as it does when you speak. And what I'd want to say about this is, is, is that the, the ordinary is extraordinary. You, only, you, you, you don't catch that the ordinary is extraordinary if you're a bit out of focus with it. Yeah? Yeah, because you're a little bit asleep, perhaps. And that, and, and, and that, and that is really as far as it, as far as it goes. The, the, the ordinary moments of life, of drinking tea and um, washing dishes and going for walks and all, all of these things, is absolutely the, the, the replete with the, the extraordinary, with, um, with, 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 with wonder and, uh, and, and beauty and sublimity. So it's all there already. It's all there. It's all there already in every moment. And and but but when when life seems ordinary, humdrum, and, and quotidian, it's because you're not actually fully meeting the the, the unfolding of, of life. You're just not fully meeting it. That's that's the only thing, you know. Um, and that's not a moral failing. I have to I have to add. It's just it's just that life does that sometimes. Mm. But really, every moment, every moment of life, regardless of what you're doing and what you're engaged in, and whether it's dramatic or, 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 or extremely, I don't know, every day, is unique. Every moment is unique, just as every snowflake is u unique. Nevertheless, we have a notion of like continuity of, continuity of moments. We have, a, we have a feeling very often that um, think things are the same. And that, that it's almost like a part of our, a pragmatic part of our function in as human beings. We need we need to samify things. We need to we need to put in a kind of an evenness to things and a, a predictability to things in order in order just to negotiate the practicalities of life. Our species does that. Our brains are very good at doing that. Uh, scientific laws, which are really just mathematical expressions of of um, a perceived regularity in things enable us to do all the kind of technical stuff that we do in order to survive and make films and uh, and all of these wonderful things. So, so there's something going on there that's sort of pra that's sort of pragmatic, um, but in, in 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 a slightly in a meditative, by which I mean open, receptive, vulnerable way of being in in the yoga way of being in the world. One notices that that, um, that the moments are unique. You know, they have a similarity. Just the snowflakes are all based on an hexagonal pattern, on a pattern of a six-fold symmetry. So, um, they are nevertheless unique, never ever ever re repeated, for all eternity. And moments are actually like that. The samifying, which makes life manageable, comes from us. That's what we do for for, for, for pragmatic. For pragmatic reasons, and perhaps so as not to be kind of like overwhelmed and fall, fall, falling through through endless mandalas <laughs> mm -hmm. in, in, in 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 life. That's what we do, you know. Um, but it, it seems to me actually, once you you kind of get fail, you get a little bit accustomed to falling through endless fractal mandalas forever. That you can actually manage, and you can still get on a bus, and you can, and you, <laughs> yeah. and you can still write an essay, yeah, and you can still wipe your bottom. <laughs> you know, and you can still make love to your girlfriend, and all these kind of things. And uh, actually, the, the, you can just get on with it. Um, so the ordinary, just to, to kind of recap a little bit, repeat perhaps a little bit. The the, the the ordinary is the extraordinary. Yeah. The extra the extraordinary ordinary, and, and a lot of again a lot of what we're about is the extraordinary ordinary. That is to say, people, you don't need to be busting a good trying to have adventures, either cosmic adventures or. <laughs> Bungee jumping. Or bungee jumping. Even though, you know, if that's if that's how you're built and that's what you like, go for it. We're not gonna kind of say no either. But just just pointing out that this life, this life, even if if all you do is kind of sit on your bed 
<laughs> it's all an adventure. It's all there. It, yeah. I couldn't say it better myself, you know. And uh, So the orientation that Tanya asked about, or the perspective, is well, it's the perspective of, of, of noticing the, the uniqueness as opposed to the sameness. And that is just a perspective. That's just the gear that the brain can be in that enables you to encounter life like that in its infinite depth. And, its and, infinite and now everyone's in... wondering, oh, how, how do we get to that gear that you just mentioned? Well, you just, you just uh, I mean, I say yoga, yoga is both the method and the, and the, and the fruit at the same time. To yeah. say that kind of early <laughs> on, you know, and and what is what is the practice of yoga? The practice of yoga is is a radical openness to what's what is, whatever it is. Yeah. And that's not something you have to cultivate. It's it's it, it's there waiting for you. You just plug into it. You just flip the switch, you know. And, and another way that I kind of frequently expect to say it's a, it's a it's a letting be, it's a letting be with bright awareness, but with bright awareness. You can kind of let be just by going to sleep. When you when you're sleeping, you're letting everything be, aren't you? But this is letting be with bright awareness. Again, not difficult, and it's and again not a cultivation. It's just a plug in. Flip the switch. Flip the switch. Encounter life like that. You know, with a perspective that 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 brings to the fore the discontinuities and and the uniquenesses, um, as opposed to the. The other, the other stuff, the humdrum yeah. kind of sameness. But I mean, I, mean, I, would, I you know, I'd have to add, add the caveat here. You know, make sure you can kind of cope and, and and do the stuff you need to do. But it's not hard. You can trust. You can trust. You can trust it. You know, the um, that whole gestalt thing of um, is to say that you know you can trust the hierarchy of needs. Your brain is a wonderful org organ that sorts out priorities, which is called the hierarchy of needs. You know. Mm -hmm. and you, and you, you, you can encounter life without anxiety and your brain will throw up what you need to do when you need to do it, usually. And trust, so I suppose you had a kind of trust and I like to talk about it, about all this event in terms of a settling down. Just let yourself settle into the, the flow of things, relax into it, relax into it and then enjoy the bugger. <laughs> <laughs>